بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف In the name of Allah, the Compassionate, the Merciful. Tonight coincides the birth anniversary of Imam Musa ibn Ja'far salam and in the presence of the Lady Fatima Ma'asuma alayhi salam we are very fortunate to be here and to commemorate this birth anniversary. So we are here to share with the lady the joy for this birth anniversary. Although the atmosphere in the months of Safar overall is not a joyful atmosphere, but we still have to remember this important occasion. Therefore, I decided to talk about a hadith from Imam Musa ibn Ja'far salam, which uh, is one of the exceptional hadith about the significance of reason and reasoning. This hadith is in Al-Kafi, volume 1, and it starts from page 12 and goes on for several pages and it is very special Uh, I know this hadith for I think more than 20 years and I always admired this hadith and about maybe 15 years ago I asked you know one of the brothers to do his thesis about this hadith and alhamdulillah he finished and then became a book in Farsi but perhaps nothing that much available in English so inshallah this lecture and the lecture inshallah next week is more to introduce this hadith to English speaking brothers and sisters this hadith is the address which Imam made to Hisham ibn al-Hakam and because Hisham was a person who was very understanding and a person who was engaged in intellectual discussions so it's not surprising that Imam found him qualified to be given such a treasure because one of the things that decides the level of depths of the discussion of Imams is the addressee, the one who was addressed. So in this hadith, Imam has found Hisham a person who has good understanding and appreciation, so he gave him this beautiful hadith. The hadith starts with this, Ya Hisham, إن الله تبارك وتعالى بشر أهل العقل والفهم في كتابه. O Hisham, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given the glad tidings, the good news, بشارة to the people of reasoning and understanding. فقال Allah has said to them فبشر عباد الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه. Give the glad tidings to those servants of mine. Abad means abadi. Those servants of mine who listen to the word. I don't have time to enter into this discussion. But I give you just some idea, then inshallah you can yourself follow up. I think 
one characteristic of human beings is that Allah has given them the ability to express themselves. Allamahul bayan. And Allah expects us also to solve our problems with this bayan. He has sent his prophets and gave them the ability of expressing themselves as we have in this hadith later the ability of bayan and the Quran is a message which is again for bayan and whenever we have problems whether we have conflicts disagreements or we want to solve something we have to, we want to plan something we want to construct something as a human beings the most natural choice also must be bayan to speak and to listen so the ability to speak and listen is very important gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah doesn't want us to act like animals to fight and attack and solve the problem with power. Allah wants us to use the power of words. And the power of words is much more than the power of any instrument or any part of body your leg or you know your hand no matter how strong you are is not able to be compared to the power of a speech therefore we should try to be ready to listen and to speak more to listen because we have this tendency to speak so it's more important to train ourselves for listening and Imam Ali alayhi salam says in the beautiful description that he has of a brother in God he says kana li fi ma madha akhun fillah one of the things that he mentions about that brother is kana ala an yasma' ahrasa minhu ala an yatakallam he was more willing to listen than to speak how many people are like this not that many most of the people prefer to speak than listening so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَبَشِّرْ عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلِ Give this glad tidings to the people who listen to the word because word must be listened not rejected without listening as human beings your very natural reaction must be to listen no matter who is the speaker you should listen maybe there are some exceptional cases those are for secondary you know rulings but generally speaking naturally we should listen فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ and then they follow that which is the best either best in the sense that it is the best among good choices or sometimes ahsan can mean better compared to something which is not good because in arabic like farsi sometimes we use superlative adjectives not necessarily because it's really better or more it can mean just this one has this quality and the other one doesn't have for example, when we say Al Jannatu Khairun min nar heaven is better than hell, doesn't mean that hell is good and heaven is better. Better here means this is good and that one is not good. But because we want to compare, we see this. So Fayatabiuna Ahsana, either it means that among those words which are said, there are others that may be also good but not the best. So you go for the best, or maybe some of them are not even good. You go for the one which is good. So you must have this ability to discern, to select and choose what is better or what is best. But this comes only when you have the ability to listen. You first listen and then you think and analyze and then you choose. Very rational. Don't get angry, don't get emotional. Don't let your love or hatred affect your decision. Don't say, because this is said by my friend or my teacher, so I accept it. Or because this is said by someone that I don't like him, I reject. 
فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ The choice must be based on objective criteria. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ حَدَاهُمُ اللَّهِ These are the people that have received Allah's guidance. No matter what else they do, no matter what other thoughts they have, just the fact that they are able to listen and select free from emotions, this is a sign of being guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps normally we don't take this as a sign of being guided. We take the sign of being guided to have proper beliefs or to do certain rituals. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those who are really guided are the people who have such treatment and such attitude towards word, towards what is said. And then Allah says, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ And these are the people of understanding, the people of reasoning, the people of thought, the thoughtful people. So this is the beginning of hadith. With such a beautiful beginning, Imam starts the hadith and then he mentions several points and quotes verses of the Quran. I go to the middle of hadith because the time is not enough and I want to finish in two sessions because then inshallah I'm traveling so just two nights and the next week inshallah we talk about this hadith. So we go to the middle of hadith. Ya Hisham, inna likul shay'in dalilan. Oh Hisham, truly everything has a sign. There is something by which you can always understand realities. This by itself is a very important principle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything and along with the creation, Allah has set us up for, for us something that we can use to understand. In other words, nothing has been created by Allah and kept totally hidden. What Allah has created, at the same time, He wants to be discovered and to be known. This is very important. So everything which exists at the same time is understandable. Some people, some philosophers have gone to the extreme and they say existence means perception. To exist means to be perceived. We don't say like that, but we say existence and being understood or perceived come together. They are not synonymous, but they come together. So Allah has created everything and has made also at least one way, maybe sometime more, to discover what exists. This is very important and this shows how our ontology and epistemology come together. This is very important. So, when there is a sign by which you can understand everything, what is the sign by which you can understand someone's intellect? Dalilul aql. Many people claim that we have aql. Indeed, some people say something beautiful. They say, you know, when it comes to money, there is such a tendency that many people claim that we are not rich. They want to be somehow humble. So they say, I am not rich. Or when it comes to, for example, you know, having a, I don't know, high position, people who have high position, they may say, I don't have high position, I am a very, you know, humble person. Sometimes a person comes from a noble family, he says, no, I am a very ordinary person. But when it comes to aql, no one here says, I don't have aql. Everyone says, my aql is complete. Everyone says, my aql is perfect. Here is an area that no one wants to be humble. Because aql is somehow very much related to being human being. If I say, my aql is not okay, then I am questioning my very being human being. So this is something that even the most stupid person would not want to say, I have little agl. Everyone says, my agl is complete and perfect. And this is good, because then this gives ground to 
argue with them and to discuss with them. If someone says my aql is broken and I don't understand, then you cannot you know, discuss with that person. But how can we judge whether someone has actually benefited from the gift of aql in the sense of having active aql? As a potential, everyone has got aql. But some people have not actualized, have not activated their aql. Their aql is not used, is not trained, is not educated. What is the sign of a person whose aql has been activated and is functioning? Imam Qasim salam says, وَدَلِيلُ الْعَقْلِ أَتَّفَكُّرِ The sign of having active functioning intellect is to think, to contemplate, to ponder. If there is a person who has always ready-made answers, Apart from ma'sumin, whose knowledge comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if ordinary human beings, they don't need or they don't feel that they need to think. And as soon as you ask them something, they just start speaking for everything. They have a solution. In every debate, they have a strong view. This means their aql is not active. When your aql is active, you are very reluctant to make judgment. You need time. You need to get information and analyze them. Sometimes even after lots of hours of thinking, you say, I don't have enough evidence to make any judgment. If there are people who say sometimes we don't know, then when they say we know, you can be hopeful. If someone says, I know everything apart from ma'sumin, so you have to think that this person exaggerates. If there are people who never think and always have ready-made answers, then you have to be worried. A person who has active and functioning intellect, he needs to think. Thinking is a sign of using your intellect. وَدَلِيلُ الْعَقْلِ أَتَّفَكُّرُ Tafakkur is the action of reason. So without this action, how can you realize this is there or not there? What is dalilu tafakkur? How can I realize someone is thinking or not? Because some people lack, you know, they are like artists. They can pose as a person who is a great thinker or philosopher. You know, sometimes people, when they go to take photos, they know, you know, how to look so that everyone thinks this man must be a person who is a philosopher or a thinker. These are not real things necessarily. How can I realize whether someone is a thinker or not? It's not just by the way he looks. Imam Qasim alayhi salam says, وَالدَّلِيلُ tafakkur as Silence. The one who is thinking needs silence. You cannot speak and at the same time think. It's very difficult. You need to be silent and think, make you know some analysis and then some conclusion, and then you share it with other people. If I am all the time speaking, then I don't have chance to think. Those who think, they need some chance to develop ideas, collect information, check everything against logical requirements, against religious requirements, and when they are 100% sure, then they share this with other people. If you don't have silence, 
then you cannot think. Also, there is another reason for silence being a sign of thinking. Those who think, not only they need silence, but also, the second point, but also, when you are a person who is thoughtful, then you don't find necessary to speak too much. The people who speak too much for everything, you know, little they speak, these people don't have deep thoughts in their mind. When you have deep thoughts in your mind, for many things you feel it's not necessary to spend your energy and time. You prefer to continue your thinking, your search for truth, and other intellectual activities. You only speak when necessary. This is another reason. And perhaps we can add to being silent, being in silence, which is different. Sometimes I am silent but I am engaged in a conversation and now this is the term of my friend to speak. Although I am not speaking, but silence still is missing. Or sometimes I am not speaking, but I am listening to MP3 player or you know, to my you know, Walkman or whatever. Again, silence is missing. So for a person who needs to think, not only he should keep silent, but also he should avoid unnecessary conversation, unnecessary sounds, unpleasant noise, so that he can think properly. So if, for example, you are in a big you know, crowd, everyone is talking, shouting, then you cannot think properly. Although you are not speaking, but you are not able to think because there are so many distractions. Something that I sometimes, you know, say normally in very close circles, but perhaps this is a good time to mention here also, is that sometimes I feel sorry that in our culture, we don't that much appreciate silence. Even when you go to the holy places, if you go to the shrines, for example, you don't feel people are that much appreciating silence. When I am there, I want to recite the Quran or Ziyara loudly. I enjoy my own voice. I think everyone else is enjoying my voice. But maybe the other people don't like my voice or they want to concentrate. You see many people when recite Ziyara or recite Quran, they speak it loudly. This can be annoying other people. And even if they are not reciting the Quran or Ziyara loudly, in every few seconds someone says, say Salawat loudly. But people are there to think, to ponder, next to such a great personality, next to Imam or to Lady Ma'asuma, people need to be very polite. So this can include also this case. We love Salawat, but if Salawat is annoying people, then you should keep it for yourself. It's like, for example, when people are in a circle of a study, the teacher is teaching them some deep ideas about philosophy. Then people come one by one and they say, Salamun Alaikum, Salamun Alaikum. So these teachers and students, you know, would have problems. They cannot concentrate. Don't say Salam is very important in Islam. Yes, Salam is very important in Islam, but understanding is more important. If you understand, you know that this is not the time to disturb people. 
Salawat is very important, but people need some time to think about their problems. Maybe this man wants to change his life. He needs a moment of silence next to the holy person to be inspired. You say salawat loudly, you say your ziyara loudly, so there is no chance for silence. So, silence is not just that you don't speak. You need something more. You need also any unpleasant voice or noise to be missing. Sometimes there are some, for example, sounds that can be pleasant. That's not a problem. For example, maybe you go to, for example, next to a river. Maybe the sound of water is useful for you. You can have your concentration. Okay, that's not a problem. That's not against silence. But anything which is distracting, anything which is taking your attention away, this is not helpful. So, the people who are understanding, the people who are thoughtful, they are contemplative, and the sign for being contemplative is assumed is silence. Everything has a matiya. Matiya means something that you can use as a vehicle. It can be something like a donkey that you ride, or a horse, or a camel, or today can be a car, or train, or plane, but it's not only for physical transportation. You also need something, a vehicle for your spiritual transportation. For example, we have hadith that every person for meeting and reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to use night as his matiyah. Without benefiting from night, you cannot reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La yutrak illa bimtata'il layl. If you want to meet, reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and meet Him, you need to benefit from the blessed moments in the night. For salatul layl, for contemplation, or whatever. So, everything which is in need of some change, some transformation, has some vehicle, some instrument. You have to be wise to find the best. What is the best thing that I can use for this aim? If you want to travel, from one town to another town, you have to find the best way of transportation. But if you want to, for example, become a philosopher or a faqih, a jurist, again, you need matiyah, you need a vehicle. You need something that you can rely on so that after some time you are there, you have reached your destination. So everything has a matiyah. لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ matiyah has a, you know, kind of instrument or vehicle. وَمَتِيَّةُ الْأَقْلِ And if you want to achieve intellect, it, it, which means if you want to activate your intellect, because Allah has given everyone intellect. If you want to activate, and if you want your intellect to function, if you want to be a person of reasoning and understanding, you have to be humble. As soon as you become arrogant, then your reason stops. Doesn't function. And if arrogance becomes your established quality, your reason will be switched off forever. It will never function. 
You look at shaitan, for example. Shaitan made very funny mistake. You know, if you look at shaitan, you don't find that his mistake was something very complicated. You know, look at the way he answered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, why you didn't prostrate before Adam? I have created him with my hands, means I have created him according to my direct will. Why you didn't do such that? Why didn't you prostrate before him? You expect something very deep to come. Something that, you know, not everyone can answer. But such a stupid <laughs> answer comes from shaitan. He says, Ana khayrun min khalaqtani min nar wa khalaqtahu min teen. I am better than him. Why? Because you have created me from fire and you have created him from clay. It's very, you know, very a stupid answer. Shaitan with 6,000 years of ibadah makes such a funny mistakes. Why? Abba was takbara. Because of arrogance. You can be a person who studies for 40, 50 years and make funny mistakes that everyone would laugh at you if you are arrogant. Sometimes people who have very good history of learning, they make big mistakes. Why? Because in that particular time, they were not humble. They didn't listen to what another scholar or even their own student may have said. But if you become all the time arrogant, then your reason will be switched off completely. Then all your life will be full of mistakes, not just one mistake there, here or there. So, matiyatul aql at tawadu. This tawadu is very much related to accepting the truth. Inshallah, in the next session, we will talk more about this part and the inshallah coming parts of the hadith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to be always a person of thinking and understanding. May Allah increase our knowledge and love for himself and his pure servants. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and our parents and those who have rights upon us. May Allah enable us to serve our Imam Zaman before and after he comes. May Allah give healing and shafa in such a blessed night to all the people who are ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring honor and dignity and peace to this world with the advent of Imam Mahdi. Ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillah.